It's a good day. The NHL playoffs are nearing. It's a good day. We're going to be talking with a ACC champ. Uh, DJ Horn is going to join us on the phone of the NC State men's basketball team in about 15 minutes, maybe a little less. And and it's a good day because people think we're pretty powerful. And I, and I say that understanding that in this case, we're not. If if you think we had something to do with, uh, with Andrei Svechnikov's big game earlier this week, I'm not a superstitious person, so I just might not agree with you. But uh, the fact of the matter is this. On Monday, here on this show, and on Tuesday here on this show, uh, we called out Andrei Svechnikov. Now, it wasn't a, like a, a mean call out. Yeah, like we didn't want to fight him or anything. <laughs> wasn't like, yeah, it wasn't like a... Well, I wasn't even here, so three, I can't... I, I, three I, I, I o'clock, no beef with meet him. me in the parking lot. It, it wasn't that. But it was, if the Canes are going to play better, we were getting nitpicky, right? If they're going to have their ceiling reached in the postseason, they need good Andre. They needed Svetch to play like the second highest paid player on the team and, and all these things that, that you know, his status brings. And then Tuesday night came around and he had a lacrosse goal, right? Then Tuesday night came around and, and Svetch pulled off the Svetch. And, and on top of that, played a great complete game. Didn't get caught up in the frustration that, that Boston was trying to lure him into. Uh, and that has been a, a problem for him in recent weeks. It was a great game. And, of course, one of my reactions on Twitter was like, well, you know, tell me to shut up, Andre. And that's, that sounded uh, pretty personal. And and the amount of keep calling him out or who should we call out next as the responses were, were kind of funny to me because I'm not a superstitious person. I don't think, you know, oh, I wore my lucky jersey, so I should wear it again next time. But let's pretend. I figured it would be a good pretend, right? If if we call out Svetch, Svetch steps his game up, plays great, who's next on the list? I'm calling out Jack Drury. Uh, wow. I was going to say Jack Drury, too. Look at that. Unplanned synergy between me and Graham Hill, who's producing the show today. Jack Drury is next on my list of people that need to step up. Again, not in a mean way. I'm not saying he's been playing bad. I'm not saying he's been holding the team back. I'm not saying anything along those those lines. But I'm saying he could be the gasoline to the fire that go, right makes it go to another level. He missed about two weeks with an injury uh, towards towards the middle of March to the end of March. Missed about two weeks with an injury. Since returning, he's played in eight games. I have his, his goal and assist total memorized. Those eight games. Zero goal, zero assists. It's, it's not hard to memorize. Uh, no one is asking him to go ahead and be Gensel or Ajo. Or Jarvis, Jarvis yep. or or Svetch, or or heck, even like Kuznetsov. Um, but he on that, if he is kind of quarterbacking, centering that fourth line, and you can't see it on, if you're listening on radio, but I'm doing the the air quotes fourth line because it's really not the quality of a fourth line. But if you're going up against other teams' fourth lines, if if you're gonna be the guy calling the shots at that level. You know whether it's Nason, Jury, Fost, or something along those lines. Um, you can kind of take everything one notch up if that group is producing points. If Drury is producing points against those back of the line, back of the lineup defensive pairings for your opponent, that takes a little bit of pressure off of the ones we just mentioned, the top of the line, the first two lines, the, even the stall line, because that that gives them a little bit more freedom. It gives them a little bit more wiggle room, gives them a little bit more of that loosey-goosey, play light, play loose, play well thing. And and goodness gracious, if you can unlock the top lines even better than they've been playing, specifically that top line, that that uh, uh, Ajo Jarvis Gensel line, if you can unlock them to play even a, a percentage better, that could be the difference. That could be the difference. Right? When you get to the postseason, and this is true for every sport, but I feel like it's even more true in the NHL. The intensity goes up. The the physicality goes up when you get to the postseason. And the Canes are only three games away from the postseason. With all of that ramping up, your margin for error shrinks. Right? And it and it truly becomes one of one of those situations where you may not realize 
you know, a, a shift with your fourth line in the second period of game two of a seven game series, you look back and go, wow, that was, that was the turning point, wasn't it? And you'd like to think the game always comes down to like, oh, right. You'd like to think, and, and in some ways it does, but that's only if everyone else is doing their job. So I'm looking at, at Jack Drury as the guy who, if I do have, which I don't believe I do, but if if I do have some magical powers, right, if if the, the hockey elves came through and sprinkled some magic dust on this show and said, all right, whoever you call out is going to immediately ramp up their play, I'm going with Jack Drury. Now, I will say, to be fair, outside of the scoring production, I've been really impressed with Jack Drury's ability of just becoming a scrappy player. You could tell he's growing with his feistiness and being willing to drop the gloves with other players' opponents. Like R- I do like some that. of that Harvard off. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Taking the sweater off the waist. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Um, he does kind of have that look, doesn't, <laughs> doesn't I mean, he? He did go to Harvard, uh, which, I, by the way, I know that's the most said thing about him. I'm just that's, I'm tongue-in-cheek saying that. Um that's what I'm like. I'm not saying he's bad. And by the way, it's not like Svetch was playing terrible either, right? It's just be a hint more aggressive, right? It, it's it's don't just get the look, finish the look, right? Don't just be in position to to have the puck bounce your way. Be in position to have the puck bounce your way and take advantage of it when it does. It's that next step. Right. I like the best example is is Svech going for the 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 lacrosse goal, the cradle goal, the Svechnikov. You only do that when you are being aggressive. Right? That's what your confidence is at an all time high. You don't you know, you play it on on the ice, maybe you look for a teammate in, in, in the front of the net, you try to uh you know, be a bit more conservative when you're you're just trying to make maybe less waves. Svech was not interested in making less waves. I want Jack Jury to, to not be interested in making less waves. I want him going in with the explicit goal of making waves. And again, it's a compliment, right? The, the, these call-outs don't happen for players who I think they just need to get by. They come to players who I think there's another level. And yes, just to be extra clear, we are going to be going through the Canes with a fine-tooth comb leading through the, the next three games, right? It is it is polishing season, right? It's, it's, you're getting to the fine sandpaper. You're trying to, to finish things off and put the finishing touches on their season because once the, the, the postseason gets here, it's, it's too chaotic to do any of that. Jack Drury, you are the the next thing on our polish list. And who knows? He could be the X factor the Hurricanes need in the postseason. It seems like there's always a theme with the Hurricanes in the postseason. You know what you're going to get out of Ajo. You know what mm-hmm. you're going to get out of Jarvis. This year, throwing Gensel. There's always kind of, I don't want to say under the radar player because all the Hurricanes players on their roster are good, but a guy you're not expecting to achieve. Like Max Domi, mm-hmm. two, two rounds ago when the Hurricanes needed an X factor player against the Boston Bruins in the first round. It, it, it does feel like it happens more in the NBA because there's just so many more points scored. But there's that game where, like, you know, you call it the Mike Miller game. You sure. call it the uh, the Olenek game because it's like that that random role player scored 28 and hit six threes. Um, there could be a Jack Drury game, yeah. right? Maybe it is an Eastern Conference Finals against a team like Boston that you just played or, or an Eastern Conference Finals against a team like, um, I don't know, Florida, right? Whoever it is. And then you get three goals. In a, you know a four game stretch from Drury, that's the difference. 